Greetings, friends. I'm going to talk about some news from Ghana. Well, it was news back in the fall. I've been meaning to talk about this for some time. It's about a huge Ponzi scheme, the collapse of this Ponzi scheme, and the really ridiculous reaction of much of the public to this event. So going back a few years now, three, four, five years, maybe longer than that, there's been this company. I don't know how long exactly it's been around for, but it had the name Men's Bank, and it changed its name again because the Bank of Ghana, which I think is connected with the government, was telling them, you can't be using the word bank because only registered banks can do that. They have to stick to their business license specifications, which was to buy gold or take gold deposits from Ghanaians and to trade gold on the international market. As far as I understand, that's all the company was supposed to be doing. They had had some warnings about their name from the government or government agencies, but th this company was below the radar until about maybe two years ago. They started taking cash deposits from the public. They were delivering a return of about 4% to 10% monthly. They were paying dividends, in other words, as if this were an investment company. Monthly, can you imagine how much that is? It's an insane, ridiculous rate of return. 4 to 10% monthly would translate into 48 to 120% uh, return per year, which is absolutely insane. In a developed country like Canada, if you want to invest in mutual funds in the stock market with a, a professional investment company, so you, you, you work through an investment advisor, depending on your risk level, generally you can expect a return of 4 to 5% per year. Okay, per year. In a, in a wealthy country like, you know, relatively wealthy country like Canada. And in Ghana, it's still a developing country. It's a relatively wealthy country in Africa, but compared to Canada, it's, it's much more poor. I mean, to get that level of return, it just doesn't make any sense at all. If you can't get that in a wealthy country, how on earth could you expect to get that in a, in a, in a less wealthy country? That is a huge red flag. I'm just going to be very blunt. Some Africans aren't going to like that a white man is talking about Ghana but, you know, some people will complain about me no matter what I'm talking about Africa. So those those angry people will they'll always be there anyways. But I have to be honest here, even though I'm an outsider, you know, I'm involved in Ghana. I'm an investor in Ghana. I want Ghana to do well. I like Ghanaians. So I do I do care about Ghana, even though maybe some people won't won't believe me. They think I'm a white supremacist, capitalist <laughs> oppressor. But I'm telling you, these people got greedy. Honestly, that's true. They got greedy and they didn't do their homework and they dealt with a dishonest man who's offering you this insane return. There were other red flags too because the logo of the company was a pyramid. Now that's not a huge red flag, but it's just a little funny that the logo of men's gold was a pyramid and they were essentially operating a pyramid scheme or a Ponzi scheme where the people at the top get good returns. And they advertise, oh, I'm getting this good return on my investment. So that attracts more investors. The money from the more investors coming in is used to pay the people near the top. It requires lots of people to sign up and deposit money in a short amount of time. You have to keep people flooding in. Apparently, from what I've researched, up to about 1.8 million Ghanaians invested money with men's gold. They were not technically supposed to be a bank. They were not technically supposed to be taking cash deposits. That was not their business license specifications. So the government started to notice, or the Bank of Ghana or the Sec Securities and Exchange Commission, they started to notice. It gets a little complicated. Let's just say higher institutions started to notice that there's this huge rush of investment going in. And, this, and how is this company accounting for the money and it seems to be off the books it's not in official bank accounts now, now i don't like banks i don't like a lot of these big corporations yes the government can be corrupt these big banks can be corrupt i don't have a lot of love for them because they they're not looking to help people they're just looking to make a profit 
But in this case, they were probably doing their job to raise concern. They did issue some warnings in previous years not to get involved with this company, but I guess you know most people didn't hear about those warnings. But whether there was warnings or not, you should have common sense and you should not be greedy to just because you can take that money and you can make more money in Ghana with many other ways, but it requires more patience. It requires more time. I will leave a link in the description of my previous video, 14 reasons to invest in Ghana. You can start a business in Ghana in many different ways, cold storage, agriculture, trading, different commodities. But people, I'm not saying all Ghanaians, I'm just saying a large number of people, they were like, oh, this is a great option. I don't have to do much. I just have to give money to this company. And one month, I'll already be having a huge return on my investments. It's too good to be true. The CEO of Men's Gold was Nana Apia Mensa. I think he's about 34 years old. Not much is known about his background. He just sort of rose to prominence with Men's Gold uh, in the last two years, very recently. He was using celebrities like television actors, actresses to advertise to the public. That helped increase the attractiveness. Their head office was very shiny and expensive furnishings, flashy suits. He was involved in philanthropy, giving to charities. Foreign businesses have done well in Ghana. Arabs, Lebanese, maybe some Chinese, maybe some Japanese. I don't know. I don't know. Different foreigners have done well. And so Ghanaians are wanting to see their own brethren have their own successful company. So Nana Apia Mensa was finally a good example of a good Ghanaian, a homegrown business. Unfortunately, he let his own people down because he was stealing from his own people. He was paying off some of these celebrities like uh, Shata Wali, the dance hall musician, comedian. Back in September, the government was finally like, you cannot take any more contracts or, or clients. You can't take on and open any more accounts. You have to focus on what you're supposed to be doing is trading in gold on the international market, which is very shady too, because we don't know how much is actually, they, they are trading some gold, I'm sure, but, we, but obviously that's probably a much low proportion compared to what they're getting from cash deposits from the public. Eventually they, their business license was revoked. Many people blame the government for taking action against men's gold. And then people blame the government for not taking action against men's gold earlier in previous years. The government is going to be blamed no matter what happens. Now the government is imperfect and maybe they are not blameless in this situation. Perhaps they could have done something better, but they're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't. Up to 200 million Ghanaian CDs were invested. And as I may have mentioned, 1.8 million uh, different customers in Ghana, 1.8 million of a population which is about 29 million. It has to collapse at some point. That's why the government probably got involved because they saw that this is just going to get even worse. Some people lost more money than others. One man invested 850,000 CDs. For my Western viewers, the Ghanaian CD has been falling in the past year, two years to the Canadian dollar. It's only about one quarter the value of the Canadian dollar. This amount of money is maybe $40 million to $50 million American dollars. But in a country like Ghana, that's a much bigger amount of money and a huge amount of people is involved in that. And most of them have lost their money and they probably won't ever get any of the money back. Now, they have been protesting to demand that the government give back their money. And some of these protests have been very unruly. In Kumasi, some months ago, Kumasi is the second largest city in Ghana. They blocked roads, they burned tires to disrupt traffic. Some people were arrested by the police. Some of them are genuinely ruined and it's a sad situation. But to demand that the government should get the money back, well, maybe it's not going to be very easy. You might not get any money back because who knows what Nana Apia Mensa or Nam won, as he's also known. Maybe he sent all the money out of the country. I mean, he escaped the country. The money might be overseas. Some of the money is in assets in Ghana. And people are saying those assets must be liquidated and then transferred to the people. You have a good argument there. Yes, the government may be able to liquidate those properties, so you may get some money back if the assets are liquidated. The basic thing is people are protesting, very angry people. 
maybe they're not all angry, but those who choose to speak to the media, very angry people. I mean, I don't know. I was debating on whether to show you some clips from uh, Ghana News, but I don't want to give the wrong impression because these angry people are not like the majority of Ghanaians who are peaceful, friendly, relatively relaxed people. But these people are very angry. So I don't mean to suggest that these people are like all Ghanaians. One man was saying that, you know, we're taxpayers too, so the government may must give us our money back. Well, not just because you're a taxpayer doesn't mean that the government must reimburse you all this money. That's not how it works. The government has certain limited duties, and it should be focused on s schools and health care and fixing the roads with all the potholes, which everyone knows is a problem, fixing the light out situation, you know, the power outages fixing those real problems they should not be fixated on saving people from their own poor decisions because that's impossible people will always have bad decisions the only difference in in this case many people were involved so they were able to pool their resources their e i mean their efforts together and to make a social movement i don't know if they're suggesting that the government should reimburse you but if that's what some of them are suggesting just realize that you are asking other ghanaians to pay you back for you losing your own money with this foolish charlatan. You're asking other Ghanaians, the smart ones, to pay you back for your foolish decisions. And that's not fair to other Ghanaians. I saw one man was holding a sign saying, this is not what we voted for. If you think the government must protect you from everything, what if it rains and the rain comes and floods your house? What if you get sick? Are you expect the government to protect you from everything? What if you get malaria? Is the government going to pay for your medicine maybe some of these things you could argue okay we have a health plan and then yeah so maybe some things the government can help you protect but there's millions and infinite number of things that can happen that can harm you and the government is only there to do a few things because that's all it can do it has to take money from you anyways it has to take money from Ghanaians. the government doesn't get money from everywhere the money doesn't come out of the sky the government is not there to protect you from your own poor decisions. They are not there to protect you from yourself. There are bad deals all the time. You go, you buy a bad product and they gave you a bad product. You can't go to the government to ex expect them to reimburse you every time that happens. Maybe sometimes you can call, tell the police and, hey, that person is selling a bad product. But you, your money is most likely lost in any situation. And in the same situation with men's gold. Now, as for Nana Apia Mensa, he fled the country. He wasn't supposed to because he was uh, out on bail. He went to Dubai. He was arrested in Dubai. From what I understand, he's still in Dubai because he's standing trial there for a different matter re regarding some other business deal that he made, which went bad. They may send him back to Ghana after this prosecution in, in Dubai. It's a little unclear to me, but you know, Nam one, there's always going to be men like him. The thing that really interested me the most about the story was this negative reaction, not of all the public, but of the certain investors making these demands, making these protests. It's just giving you a bad image. It's making you look bad. You don't have this entitlement for making poor decisions. You should be protesting for the light out to be fixed, for the potholes to be fixed and the roads need to be fixed. Whatever it is, healthcare, schools. Maybe you should be protesting not to let China take over Ghana because China is trying to take over Africa right now and get you into debt. No one's protesting about that. You know, I'm not a fan of democracy in my own country, Canada, in any country. So I'm not saying specifically democracy is bad for Ghana. It is, but it's bad. It's bad for all countries because you get these kinds of people who have a sense of entitlement and they will even resort to violence. They will they will be the mob mentality to mob you, to force you to give them things which they don't deserve. Ghanaians like the legacy of Jerry Rawlins. He was a military dictator from 1981, I believe, to about 1992. And then he served as, a pre as the democratically elected president until 2001. But specifically during his military dictatorship, why do Ghanaians have a good memory of Rawlins? Because it was not a democracy. He was like a king. He was a dictator. He could get things done. So there would be less corruption. 
things could get done. Now you have democracy, you have more corruption. It's harder for things to get done. Now, that's not a perfect answer. I'm not a scholar, but I think this is part of the reason why Ghanaians have a fond memory of Jerry Rollins. So anyways, democracy has a very poor record. And the moral of the story is, because my friend Paul in Ghana, he was told by some people, oh, Paul, you, you got to invest in men's gold. Everyone's doing it. We're getting a huge return. And, and Paul was like, that doesn't sound very good to me. He said, if everyone's going somewhere, that's not where I go. So he didn't have anything to do with that. Hasta luego, amigos.